everyone. You are with Radina from the Stellar Sound podcast, your host for today. And right now we're joined by a very interesting guest. I know I say it every time, but I'm really honest in that because I really like to be talking to her. And I just told her that before we started recording. Her name is Aronia, and we're going to be talking specifically about her latest project, Amber and the Moon. So welcome. Ronya to our Stellar Sound podcast. Very nice to have you here and to get to know you better. Thank you so much for the invitation. I'm really excited since it's my first ever podcast. Yay! So I'm excited <laughs> for your questions. Awesome, great. Well, hopefully we do well, but you know, I'm just very excited to get to know you. Hopefully also people that are listening would find something for themselves. Um, so. First thing I want to ask you, just to start from the basics, tell us a bit about you, who you are, and what led you to decide to form Amber and the Moon. So I'm I'm a songwriter, I'm uh, I'm an artist, singer, and musician, and actually I did music um, since I was a kid, and over the years it just developed into a, like a really big passion. And then I decided, I think three years ago, to um, move on the other side of the country. So I live in, in Germany, now in Hamburg, to study songwriting there. And that was also the beginning of um, of Amber and the Moon, basically. And Amber and the Moon is an indie folk project, um, for those who, who don't know uh, what my project is about. And what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bit about who you are and how you decided to um, even create Amber and the Moon. How did it come to be? Yeah, so um, like I already mentioned, um, I did music for a long time before Amber and the Moon. Um, I think I started to write my first songs when I was at the age of 14. And then it was like, like when you grow up, you have your um, little band projects and it's more about fun and not taking it too serious, like just um, a bunch of friends um, play some instruments, maybe yeah. rather badly than, <laughs> than any good. And then um, I had like a solo project I performed under my um, real name. Um, but then during the pandemic in 2021, um, there was like a um, tricky time to me because like for everyone, um, mm -hmm. I tried to be creative and uh, stay creative. And this was the time where I got into music production a tiny bit and I started to produce my very first um, singer called um, El Dorado. And actually it was my first release um, with M. Benjamin. I think it was in April 21. And, but I always had in mind I wanted to have a band, but during that time it was quite hard to connect with people. So I started as, uh, as a solo project and then it finally developed into like a band. Mm -hmm. So we're now four piece band, um, which is really nice. Yeah. There's four piece even. Yeah, oh. we have live, we play, um, I play with um, three. Um, other people on stage, which is really exciting to me because awesome. when I started out, I always had like my um, guitar sounds and I had a vision for it, how it could sound. But then when you finally be on stage and everything that you imagined um, mm -hmm. came true and you're surrounded by all these different instruments and, and the vibe is really great. <laughs> yeah. And who are the people that are part of Amber and the Moon now, actually? what? How did it happen that you decided exactly to be joined by them, these three extra people? <laughs> yeah, so it started with uh, Jonathan. Um, I met him during my studies. Um, he also studied songwriting with me, but we never happened to actually collaborate. Mm -hmm. um, so we knew each other and we liked each other, but we kind of didn't think of it. I don't know why. <laughs> and when I just released Adorado, um, he got into bass playing during that time. So he's actually a guitarist and a singer as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then he offered me if I ever need a bass player, um, I could just text him. Great. And that's uh, how it all started. Um, now he's playing guitar in mm -hmm. <laughs> my band and he's also singing um, a lot of beautiful harmonies in the band which are also a big part of our music I would say mm -hmm. and then we got into arranging the songs I already already wrote 
And so this is kind of the Amber and the Moon Foundation, I would, yeah. I would assume. Mm -hmm. And then later on, we were joined by our drummer, Tom. And um, he's really, really decent. Um, he's great ideas and it was kind of the first and best fit. So um, he was recommended to us. We were looking for a drummer um, since the idea was to have a band and go into the studio and have like full band arrangements as well on stage. And then um, I think a friend of ours just recommended him and we just met him once and after one rehearsal we said, yes, that's it, we should do this. <laughs> it was a good click then. Like yeah, definitely. One um, rehearsal and then... It was cool. And in the end, um, our producer, Ben, um, now happens to also play bass with us on stage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he was part of the journey from the beginning, but um, just lately he transformed into an active band member which is also really nice and i'm really happy that i found them yeah it well, seems like you have a good collective now with you and people that vibe together well and okay, add something to each other super and uh, what about the themes that you are um entangled with what are the kind of themes because i read online that you um, at least you describe your music as being rather somber, so a bit dark or melancholic in a way. So tell me a bit about the themes that you work around. Um, yes, I think it's not something that really happened intentionally. I think it's just my natural voice in music. So mm -hmm. it's not that I thought of, oh, I want to do this kind of music specifically. Um, it just happened, um, mm -hmm. so um, I think that's the best way to describe it. I, I wouldn't say that it can't change in the future for um, additional records, but for now it's, um, I, I would say it's more indie folk, um, melancholic, a bit of yeah. mysterious vibes, and um, yeah, right now I really like that. Mm -hmm. Do you think that it matches you or is kind of an expression of you as a person, as your identity, or is it something a bit more uh, fictional, something that you create for yourself in the music, if you know what I mean? Mm, I think both. So it's definitely 100% um, me and, and music. Um, like if music would speak for me, um, that's how it sounds. Um, and yes, of course, we, we are creating sounds um, and try to create a sound world so um, that it's not just something I perceive when I'm playing, that um, I have a feeling that I only can feel or hear. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to, to deliver it in that way. So um, this is why we created this soundscape to it. And yeah, we always have that in mind, of course, um, but it's just... I think that's it's like a language uh, you kind of start to learn it and then you can just use it um and in yeah. the beginning it's kind of it's it's a bit of work um because everyone in the band needs to be on the same page that you know where you're heading to um but i think we just uh, found our place for now and yeah, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And um, I, I always want to know a bit more and um, to get a sense of the inspiration behind any track that I hear. And now that I can speak to you, I can just directly ask you, like, where <laughs> does the inspiration come from? Or um, what are the, the things or the states like uh, mental states or emotional states that inspire you? If that is what inspires you or maybe it's something outside Net, not really internal just tell me a bit more about that and how does a song come to be as I'm um, um, it's, it's definitely always um, something that um, reaches out to me emotionally so um, I know I, I studied songwriting so I should be able to write songs about everything <laughs> basically is that um, how, how it is <laughs> but um, for me um, there's no reason in writing a song if I can't really um, connect to it or if I don't feel yeah. the urge to write about a certain feeling. Um, so maybe to have a little abstract image of it, um, like how a song is born when I write it, um, you can Im imagine it um, as a, like a tank full of emotions. 
mm-hmm. and the tank is empty in the start, but it fills itself up from day by day. And at some times it reaches a level um, which feels like a like a tension, or you feel that some things are rotating. Mm-hmm. And often I can't really tell what's going on, but I know it's emotionally um, there's something that wanted to be said. Yeah. And then that's the point usually where I grab my guitar and play melodies that I haven't played before and just uh, sing some lyrics and then like the puzzle finally solves itself and then I know oh that was a, what it was about all the time I, I feel like the urge or an emotion to write a song but it wasn't clear to me and then it's just it's just there and thanks hello to the world <laughs> I understand you completely so you really um, in a sense you really are an artist then the way we understand an artist being because you use the craft for channeling really like like you said you sometimes don't really get what it is that's bubbling but then you channel it in your craft in your in what you produce and then it makes sense yeah definitely and it's such an um rewarding feeling or it's it's also a big release um and then kind of this um tank of emotions is, is empty again and it can't can be filled yeah. So, um, and you can't con- control it basically sometimes it happens a few times in a week more mm-hmm. than it takes a few months and yeah most of the time um, because you ask what inspires me yeah. um, I would definitely say like a first hand experiences so um, like relationships you have yeah. be it like yeah. friends or um, or your um, boyfriend or girlfriend whatever and um experience you make with this world or um, things that resonate with you in general and then you have to figure out um, what it does to you yeah Um, yeah so there are different uh, topics that I write about so I think it's definitely um, about emotions in regards to people but also um, like the first single for example um, called El Dorado yeah. um, it's actually about domestic violence um, and luckily that's nothing that happened to myself mm-hmm. um, but I somehow felt the urge to write about it um, it's written from, from the perspective of a child which is too young to understand what's actually going on in the household yeah. um, but it's definitely um, sensitive enough to, to feel it and um, so this is like the pers- perspective I was writing, um, but somehow this topic resonated with me, and I was able to throw my in uh, to throw myself in 100 percent and dive in this emotion. And I think that's the important thing um, for me to be authentic and to have a connection to it. Um, and then, then it kind of just works for me to write songs. It sounds like a deeply empathic uh, experience for you then to to be able to really feel the emotion, get into it and then transfer it in your way. So to communicate it in your way, it really seems like you almost enter because that was not purely your personal experience, but it was a state that you could enter and then to view it from that side and say, okay, I can imagine or I can feel how that child would feel yeah it's, kind of and I always yeah. think it's really image and um like um visually um connected so um when I write songs I often have like clear pictures in my, in my mind that I try to put into lyrics not always that obvious but it's like a little universe that opens self opens itself up and you can just enter it and be surrounded by it and then just channel it Hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. Does that also influence the visual aspect of your videos then? This visual mindset that you have, that you carry? Kind of. It's it's actually a music video uh, trilogy that we just created for the upcoming album. So um, every um, single video can be seen as a short film, but at the same time they are all interwoven with each other and just make sense um, in the end, probably. Um, actually, like the last or the final video um, will be released uh, next month. So this is quite exciting. <laughs> awesome. 
before yeah, um, before the actual release of the full album or um, with the album release with the actually. album okay because I maybe good idea to mention now so 27th of January next year that's fine right. right. yes <laughs> that's when the album is coming out it's called things we've got in common exactly <laughs> great perfect and how is the or can you reveal that actually how is the video called um, so the video is for a song um, which is called um, While Everything Else Was Quiet and it's the last track of the upcoming album and it closes the video trilogy and right now we're in the middle of organizing everything because we have the um, music video shoot by the end of the month um, oh. so that's exciting <laughs> very exciting yeah right at the end of this year and quite last minute uh, like it's always the case you kind of actually plan things for months and then you think oh we have so much time and then it's like ah, it arrives so <laughs> soon how can we even do that <laughs> yeah. but um, yeah so if anyone wants to watch the video um, it's on YouTube and you're all dearly invited uh, to um, to stream them and kind of follow the, the history and the story and yeah, it's uh, because initially you ask if, if that's also part um, of the songs and yeah, yeah. they also connected and it's also like the mysterious vibe. Um, so we play with a bit of myths in that. Um, mm -hmm. um, our last release, Morpheus, for example, which is from Greek mythology and um, kind of evolves around um, the feeling of not... Um, yeah, feeling of uh, feeling at home and um, have restless nights, and you it's like a conversation to Morpheus out of mm. the dreams. And yes, um, there was there was a thought I had uh, on my mind, but I kind of lost track. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it will pop up. Um, yeah. Amidst the the other the other questions that I have, um, but yeah, I I personally, of course, uh, in preparation for this talk, I uh, watched a couple of videos, I listened to a couple of uh, the songs, and I I really like the visual aspect. So that's why I always have to ask this question because for me, the visuals, um, how they represent the music, how they stand behind the the message, um, that's really important for me personally. But. Um, for anyone who hasn't got an idea and they are now listening or viewing this and they are thinking, so what is Amber in the Moon about? Uh, what is the kind of song, or maybe you can name one song uh, that they can start with or a video that they can start with? Mm, that's a good question. Um, especially since the album isn't released yet. So there's only like a handful of songs they can mm -hmm. listen to. Um, if I have to pick one, I would pick two. <laughs> okay. So um, for for the video, I would uh, recommend to um, to watch Morpheus. Mm -hmm. uh, even though if it's it's the, the second part of the trilogy, so yeah. it might be confusing to not watch the other ones, but it should definitely. But still work. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, it's like musically, I think it also um, represents us very well. Um, and it features a lot of um, harmonies um, of um, Jonathan and me together, um, which is a big part of Femme Bente Moon. Um, so I like that. And generally for, for the atmosphere, I would I think I would recommend El Dorado. Um, even though we kind of re-recorded the song, so there's a new version on the upcoming album of it, and I actually prefer this one. So um, You prefer the new version? I prefer the new version. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's still the same song, but it has different features. And um, I would say the atmosphere that is created there is, um, can be really intriguing. So um, mm -hmm. I would recommend uh, El Dorado and Morpheus for now. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. Great choices. Um, I, I still need to see El Dorado, in fact, but Morpheus I've already seen. So I, I can attest to that. I really liked it. And something a bit in that line that I wanted to ask you as well. Uh, you as a person, I think I brushed upon that a little bit, but still I would like to know more. So uh, you as a person are a certain way, but do you think that you as a performer within Amber and the Moon is uh, 
slightly different, um, distinctly different, or how do you feel yourself when you perform as opposed to in your daily life? Um, I think I think that's a tricky one because um, I would say yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> so it differs and it's still um, it don't differ. Um, so I would say um, my project Amber the Moon is hundred percent me. So um, you you get everything basically. Um, mm -hmm. I'm completely honest, and it's not something I just imagine or think yeah. about and it's something that which is abstract to me I just pour everything into it um, but at the same time um, it's just the side of me so I yep. would say as a person um, I definitely have this melancholic and sensitive part but I keep to hide it and I often I'm I'm rather like an open and funny person um, and I, I, w I would say that my artist persona is something that I would usually hide or only sh share with a few of people um, in real life. Um, yes, because normally I um, keep things for myself, or if I'm around it by uh, surrounded by people, um, I'm I'm in in control of my emotions. If that makes sense. So yes. I bet you know. I bet you know per persons who barely know you, but they pour out their heart and like you've known them forever and tell you everything. Yeah. And that's not who I am. Yes, I understand. I understand. It's uh, completely fine. It's just a different way of uh, being in the world. Um, a bit like if you're an introvert or an extrovert, uh, just to put it very, that's a on the surface distinction, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, that you can be a bit more um, selective and when you feel safe with somebody and then you feel that that's your type of person, you can share a bit more of yourself, reveal a bit more of yourself. Definitely. And I also think that um, that through writing my lyrics, it's like a really healthy process because um, to not keep all these feelings for yourself, um, it's great if you find finally words for your emotions and can put them into lyrics. Um, so I would say it's I'm more honest um, through my music, um, or it enables me to be more open, um, like in, in the real life scenario or daily life scenario. Um, so it definitely carries both sides. So um, if that answers your question, I think um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. And it's always really mm -hmm. fascinating to me how different artists just find a different um, driver behind what they do and, and, and how they reveal different parts. Some of them just create a completely different persona and it's not that integrated. Yeah, yes, yeah, absolutely. There's like different personas every year and it's a completely new human. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I would say this probably won't <laughs> won't happen to me. Like I don't know what the future be is, but um, for now it's um, my my songs, my music, and me as an artist is um, me as a person. But they are still differentiated in a way. Yeah, it's more. Yeah, I also get that sense. So it's more representative of you still in the majority of the yeah. music. <laughs> Oh, perfect. All right. Um, I'm also curious, you mentioned a bit about the other three members. Um, what yeah. is the, if you can name one word to associate with each one of them, what would you say for each one of them? Okay, that could be a tough thing for me because if they listen to it, I need to be careful. <laughs> what I you can test your friendship that way. <laughs> oh, I just won't tell them about it. <laughs> Um, okay, that's a tricky one. So, um, I start with Tom, our drummer. Yeah. Um, I think he, he listens, um, point. <laughs> like, um, he's, he's really careful with everything, which I like, um, because, um, this, like he's careful when it comes to music, so he really listens to what Jonathan and I are doing and he's never too much. I mean, there are a lot of drummers who just go for all of it and just steady kick them yeah. super loud. And he's really 
that can be really quiet and, and, and soft and just listens to everyone around you. And yeah, that's what I really appreciate about him. And it also um, relates to like um, normal interaction. So mm -hmm. he's really attentive and that's, that's Tom in a little nutshell. That's <laughs> <laughs> really simple in that way. But um, okay, and Jonathan, um, he can be des best described that he wants to be an old man. Like this is actually this is his dream to have wrinkles all over him and just sit there and do nothing, just feeding ducks. <laughs> <laughs> also. <laughs> He actually wrote a song about being an old man and if, how this is life fulfilling. <laughs> <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, so Jonathan is the old man in our band, mm -hmm. and then we have Ben, uh, Ben, our producer and bass player, and I would say he's one of the kindest people I know, um, which I really appreciate. And yes, all of them are super funny, so it's like a little family and we always have a great time so oh, that's really cool <laughs> delicate sensitive uh, funny people humorous people yeah <laughs> it's a cool combination <laughs> yeah. interesting what they would say about you though what do you think they would say how do you think they would describe you oh i think they wouldn't take this question serious so um i would look bad after after the answers <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's not a super serious question, so <laughs> they can shoot. They can just shoot anything. <laughs> mm. um, yeah, maybe maybe I'll ask him. And if there's like a not another episode of this podcast, and yeah, I'm happy to tell you the answer. Yeah, what about that? Yeah, they can join, for example, when uh, 27th of January has passed and a bit after <laughs> the release, and then to get some impressions from them. As well. Okay. And if we don't like the answers, we can just cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. Um, all right. So we do have also um, a rubric that for some reason a lot of our guests want to skip. I'm very glad that you decided you wanted to take part in it. It's called the Galactic Trinity. So basically three items or objects, something that's really important for you, and to tell us a bit about those three. Um, great name, by the way, Galactic Trinity. <laughs> so I just, um, I read through your mail in the morning and I was like, oh, what can I show you? What can I show you? Um, so I have like a really basic thing, which mm -hmm. is my guitar. Um, like I have many different guitars, but mm -hmm. this is like my main go-to guitar. I think I bought it when I was 14, so 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I think that every song on the upcoming record was um, written on this guitar. So this is quite special. I think like most of the artists have like a holy relationship as uh, one of the instruments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, for me. Um, okay, let's see. And it's like um, a record um, by a band called Black Cedar Who. I don't know if you know them. They are from Switzerland. No, and and I am a bit annoyed that I don't know them because it says literally <laughs> Black Black Sea the Who. And and, yeah. and yeah, I come from the Black Sea, so that's a, that's a miss <laughs> on my part. I will send you a link later, and you probably enjoy it. Yeah, um, please do. I think they are masters at their craft. Um, they are doing in folk music, mm -hmm. and. I recently went to a show um, of theirs in Hamburg, I think it was one or two weeks ago, and it was really special. I think it was the best show I've seen this year. Mm. Um, and they are really amazing and they have a great, a great um, live set. And I don't know if you know the, the, this feeling when you go to a concert and afterwards you feel like... Um, that something just happened to you and everything makes sense again. Yeah. And yeah. Like you're, you're <laughs> like you've been rearranged. <laughs> kind of. I think you can experience this on a personal um, basis, but yeah. also musically because it was so breathtaking live show and the people resonated so much with it. And I, the day after I had a concert and I was taking so much from that show, um, yeah. it kind of reminded me of 
what I want to do actually or why am I doing this mm -hmm. um, so this was um, really nice and also I kind of took a lot of inspiration um, from their sounds um, for my upcoming record um, mm. curious now is, even more <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you hear it but for me it, it triggered a lot of sounds I wanted to try out and yeah so this is Black Cedar Who 10 out of 10 recommend okay <laughs> <laughs> so if you have a chance to see them live, I would definitely do that. Okay, and um, they are, uh, you mentioned they are a European band. They are from Switzerland, Switzerland. yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I, okay. I feel like they're touring like every day <laughs> or <all> year. <laughs> so up my social media, it's just like we played a concert tonight and it just never ends. So um, <laughs> Serious stuff, the okay. The chances are high that you're going to see them live. High chance, <laughs> yeah. I just thought of the same, yeah. <laughs> and then I have like a third um, object I think this might be loud um, yay this is a wind chime yes it's I I don't know if you hear the sound yes because it's audible it also I mean, on on the record and the thing about this uh, wind chime is that um, maybe I put it away, so it's just... You hear, you heard it, yeah. You hear, we <laughs> you heard, heard the, the ringing sound. You saw it. Um, yeah, so the story about this uh, wind chime is that um, I think I visited my mom last year dur during summer and I saw this um, at her window um, for the first time, so I don't know if... If I was just blind, I don't know if it was there forever. <laughs> and it was the first time I actually kind of saw it. Yeah. Um, or if it was just new and um, I really kind of resonated with how it looked. Um, it has like this holiday feeling to me. Um, and it's just like a warm um, aura mm -hmm. in a way. And my mom kind of noticed that I was really attracted to the sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> and by the end of the stay, stay she kind of um, put it in a, in a towel and said, yeah, take it with you to Hamburg. And I was really happy about it. And then I put it over my window um, next to my bed. And then um, I noticed when I opened my window during night, there was always like this tiny um, little noises that you just yeah. heard. And I, I love it so much. Um, it gives me like a warm feeling and it feels like a blanket and you just <laughs> <laughs> surrounded by it. And then um, I kind of wanted it to be on, on the record somehow. And I already told you about these ideas collection for Howling. Yeah. And it's actually a sound that ended up on the record. And yes. It's really funny or also... Um, interesting because for me it's it's just like a tiny noise which is on the record for like one or two seconds and i thought it's maybe something for the atmosphere but people wouldn't really notice it but so many people after hearing the song was were like what is this noise in second blah 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 <laughs> i really like it what's it it, it does so much <laughs> mm -hmm. and um, that was really cool to see because um, i was not the only person who reacted like this <laughs> to yeah. this object. Mm -hmm. So this was a uh, kind of a nice coincidence. And it also ended up on um, on the last song of the album where um, there will also be a video about. Um, so we have it two times on the record. <laughs> <laughs> and I just saw, saw it this morning and thought, yeah, maybe this could be a good fit for this um, section of the podcast definitely yeah all of them have a significance so that that's what um, the rubric is about you know something that's really uh, dear to you and to share for a different reason um and what about now besides the album coming which is coming up that and being released which is very exciting beginning of next year 27th of january um something else that you're looking forward to any live performances anything where can we catch you? So, um, yeah, besides the record, um, for which we actually manufactured winers, which is a really a uh, dream come true. Mm -hmm. um, like, if you want to, you're dearly invited to already pre-order it. Um, um, and we also have like CDs and 
other merch items, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, and yeah, like a big thing is coming up actually. Um, so we will be going on tour. Yeah. Um, first we have our album release show on the 26th of January in Hamburg. And mm-hmm. then we um, will be the support band of Rhonda for the whole tour through Germany and actually the Netherlands. Oh, so I can see yeah. that. <laughs> Hopefully. So I can, uh, like, um, I think the tour will last for two or three we- weeks and it will be like every day a new city, which will be really exciting because it's the first uh, tour I ever played. Yeah. So um, I'm really exciting, uh, excited for this. Um, and the cities we're going to play in Netherlands are the following three um, because I think most of the people who will listen to this podcast are from the Netherlands. So yeah. um, I bet I pronounced them 100% wrong. But uh, <laughs> the first one is Sneak. Uh, snake. Snake. So with the double E, right? Snake. Exactly. Yeah, Snake. Snake. Mm-hmm. Then we have Wooden. Hmm. We we'll have to write this down. <laughs> uh, oh, wooden. 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 That, yeah, yes, I know it. I know it is fine. <laughs> yes. And the third one is Sitat. Sitat. Yes. Sitar. Sitar. Sitar is in Limburg, so it's the south, really yeah. south of the Netherlands. So these are the um, three cities we're going to play in the Netherlands, which is really exciting. You have and some good venues. Exciting. You have some good venues there, actually. Um, are you going to be playing in an open uh, an open stage, or is it within a venue, really? Um, it's, a, it's an actually venue, so it's um, inside. Um, I don't know the venue... Um, titles by heart but you can definitely um check it out on, on my socials I, I posted like a tour plan there um mm-hmm. are these city any close to you um like, i think that the closest one uh, to where i personally live is uden but uh, sitart is also not that far away and it's, uh, just let me know it's i think it's in the beginning of march and i can definitely put you on the guest list it would oh, be great to see you too. That would, that would be lovely. Yeah, I would love that personally. And for anyone who is interested uh, in listening from the Netherlands, let's check uh, the events. So we'll put them in the description so that anyone can click and uh, be informed when you're coming to play. So that is uh, that's lovely to hear. And anything else? So besides the tour, anything else that you're looking that's forward to that's not really a secret? <laughs> you can share um yeah so we're going to also release new music um which will be in the making i think in january so right before we go on on tour there will be some um recording um recordings again which Mm -hmm. will be exciting and there are also some um some radio gigs all over germany which is quite exciting um, and hopefully we will be part of the festival summer Mm -hmm. um Let's see how that goes. Um, so, but next year will be full of music, and yeah, it's exciting to see how how the um, album will resonate um, with with the world, mm-hmm. and yeah, exciting to see what what happens next. And Ronnie, what would you say to anyone who is now starting and wants to do what you do or something similar that they they are at the beginning at the beginning stages of their career or trying to make it and to release their craft um what kind of advice do you have for them because you're still quite young and you are really at the beginning of everything as well yourself but uh, you do have plenty of experience in other ways before musically so what would be your advice um so my advice would be um don't like um have courage to do things and don't let anyone tell you you can't do it because that happened to me a lot and people say like you you, you can never make it and that's just not true because um, the vision which is kind of projected to the world in the life of music is that you're either successful mm-hmm. which means like everyone knows you you're like a Ed Sheeran yeah. and everything else don't exist yeah. and then there's like the, the other part and say you're not successful mm-hmm. and this is just like a weird um, 
projection of the world because um, now that I um, started to do music in Hamburg, I see that there are so many options and there are so many um, working fields in, in the music industry. Yeah. And it's so nice to see that it actually works. So um, you have, you just need courage and do what you want to do. And I think no one should stop you. And especially also on the female side, it, it can be really hard that there are guys who tell you um, that that a woman should be in a certain way or that mm -hmm. it's only about sex styles and that's just not true. Um, yes, I think just just do it. <laughs> Good one. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you, of course. I think there's a lot more opportunities than we sometimes think and we should remind ourselves it's not so black and white and if you really want it, you can find a different way. You can find a way to create it yourself. Definitely, and um, it's, I think a lot of people are waiting to for the right moment to maybe release music, and I think that's also a fault. If you always keep thinking you're not good enough already, or you should be better, because this will always be the case. Yeah, I think um, like it's so normal that you develop, and it's really important that you kind of capture um, the state you're in right now, and then just just release it into the world and then people can actually resonate with you and things can happen. So um, I think it's a pity when, when there are people who are really talented but they're just afraid of kind of um, showing it to the world and just let it happen in that way. Yeah, I, I think that it's best to take this advice. I won't say anything more because it's so so beautiful I, I hope people take it to heart and especially the ones that are really doubting themselves and yeah. just start doing something <laughs> thank you very much uh, for that Be before we end the interview I want to make it also very clear to anyone who's listening how they can support you and where they can best support you we will post the links under in the description but tell us where they can do that um First of all, thank you so much for inviting me to this wonderful podcast. You're welcome. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Likewise. And <laughs> thank you. And yes, I mean you can find us um, on Instagram. I think this is the place where I'm most active. Um, just search for Amber and the Moon, and you will find us and be updated about everything. But um, on all streaming platforms, you can find us as well like Spotify or YouTube or Apple, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever is comfortable to you listening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I also have a, a website actually, um, which is also called um, M. Bentamon Music. <laughs> and this is like a um, special place for me because I keep it like a, like a journal mm -hmm. and to every release and to every video um, I write about it. Um, and there are like different sections so I can can give you like um, really insights and um, show you around the songwriting process, the production, um, can tell you about the music video, um, our experiences there and, and the artwork. Um, and the artworks, by the way, are also all to, together co and connected. And so this is like the place um, to go to if you want to find out uh, more about um, the songs and the music. Mm, that's really your Amber in the world, uh, in the moon world. Amber in the world. <laughs> Amber in the world. Yeah, that is it. <laughs> Lovely. All right. So uh, what we're going to do, we're going to post all of these uh, links, of course, underneath in the description. Thank you again um, to you as well. I was going to say Amber, but it's Sironia, of course. <laughs> Thank you as well. And I hope that we can reconnect for another chat next year. Uh, good luck with the release. We'll talk so again. And um, for anyone who wants to support also our podcast, you can join us on Discord too. So Stellar Sound Podcast, it's uh, anywhere. When you type us uh, in Google, you will see our Instagram website, anything that you're interested in. So thank you everyone for listening as well. And um, very nice end of the year if you're listening before the end of 2022. Bye. And Merry Christmas. <laughs> Christmas. If we release it before Christmas. That I'm not sure, but we'll do our best. <laughs> okay, everyone. Bye.